Hi Whovians, Harry here, and with Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials almost here, I thought now would be a good time to go over my review of the 50th anniversary special of Doctor Who, Day of the Doctor, and this special was amazing. I thought this special was so cool, we got to have it in cinemas as well as on the TV. It just felt like a big epic event. And I will also be going over, do I think the 60th should take hints from the 50th or should it be different? And also basically just going over how I think about this episode. But with that all out of the way, before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe, also leave a like and comment down below and let's get in to the video. But before we actually get into it, I just wanted to show you something. Look, look, I got, got the Day of the Doctor poster and got Matt Smith, John Hurt and David Tennant. Look, I think, I, I love this. It's probably the biggest piece of Doctor Who memorabilia I have. Yeah. So, so good, good. I like it. Of course, it's got David Tennant, Matt Smith and John Hurt's autograph. It's just amazing. But into the actual episode, my review, the main plot of this episode is, of course, the Doctor saving Gallifrey. It is literally called Day of the Doctor because Stephen Moffat said it is an episode that centres around the Doctor. Normally, it just happens while he's there and then he walks away like really not to ever think back on it but this is an episode that fully happens to him and it affects how he goes throughout um, series 8 and 9 um, until he finds uh, Gallifrey at the end of Heaven's End and um, so that kind of tracks his journey so this is a big thing because it is him saving his home planet which he thought he burned and there are a couple of things with Unit but um, the main thing is, of course, the Doctor saving Gallifrey. I mean, you do have to deal with the Zygons, and it is kind of a comparison for the Doctor's burning of Gallifrey, because the Zygons' own planet burned in the first day of the Time War, and now they are trying to invade and make their a new planet their home, of course, being Earth. And Unit have to decide whether to basically nuke the whole of London, or try and find a different way where the Zygons can live in peace with the humans, but of course the Zygons aren't making it easy because they obviously want to just kill the humans and then take their place and live um, on Earth. But really getting into this review, I think the best place to start is with the Doctor, as it is called the Day of the Doctor, and the current Doctor at that time was the 11th Doctor played by Matt Smith. I think it is amazing. He is amazing. He is on top form as his doctor. Um, he always, he comes across and he quite often proven is the smartest person in the room, even compared to the war doctor and the 10th doctor. And it doesn't come off as arrogant, which is good. And I always think that the current doctor in an anniversary multi-doctor special should be the smartest doctor. Because what's the point, if they're not the smartest Doctor, it may as well just be the, the Tenth Doctor show then, um, rather than the current Doctor at that time. But luckily, um, I think Matt Smith does an amazing job and the Eleventh Doctor is the smartest person in the ring. And also, he comes off as a tortured soul, as a person who could have fought in the Time War. And it makes it very good because Billy Piper's The Moment tells John Hurt's War Doctor that... Um, the 11th Doctor is the man who forgets. And of course, he hasn't mentioned it much in series five, six or seven, and he doesn't, and he wants to hide it away from Clara in this episode too. And it makes sense because he is the man who forgets. So it very much fits in line with that character. If maybe you thought, oh, well, he's hiding it too much. He doesn't seem like he would have fought in the Time War. Well, it has happened so long ago. And again, he is the man who forgets. So it comes along that way that he has fought in the Time War and he's really tortured by what he has done. But he's just trying to hide it away and gives off a often jovial, upbeat personality to deal with the loss that he has suffered of him burning his home planet. And of course, we can't forget the other Doctors. There is David Tennant, who is definitely the most heroic and um, coolest Doctor in this episode. 
Um, of course, he was seen as the most human uh, doctor in his time, and it definitely shines through in this episode as well, because he's just so upbeat, and he gets, like, he is obviously the most, um, um, well, coolest doctor, as he, um, obviously gets, like, all the characters seem to, uh, like, say good things about him, like, uh, Clara, Elizabeth I, um, and other members as well in this, um, episode, but of course there is some few good digs in at him, like Eleven and War often make fun of like his uh, converse trainers, or like um, how skinny he is, or like his romantic life because uh, Elizabeth the first somehow becomes a, well, becomes a Zygon when um, obviously they are trying to trick the Doctor and the Doctor has become romantically entwined with Elizabeth the first for some reason, and the Zygon takes her appearance and then there is a joke about, um, like, Eleven, uh, sorry, a joke about Ten from Eleven about him kissing a Zygon, which has venom um, sacks in the tongue, and that is kind of jokey. And it's just cool, because even though he is the coolest Doctor, he isn't immune to banter and criticism from the other two. And of course, John Hurt is the final Doctor I want to mention, because I think he does an amazing job as a Doctor. However, I don't really see him as a warrior, which is what... Paul McGann's Doctor wanted to become at the end of the Night of the Doctor. So it's kind of like, oh well, has he become a warrior like he wanted to so he could end the Time War? But he is still kind of like a, a bit more of a morally ambiguous Doctor. And that's it. He hasn't become like a warrior that is fine with killing. I mean, the only time we see him use a gun is in the same way that we've seen other incarnations use a gun. I think actually Ten got closer to killing people in the End of Time Part 2 than we have seen this Doctor do. Yeah, he runs over a couple of Daleks with um, his TARDIS, but the Doctor has done other things almost as bad to the Daleks like, sucking them into the void, into hell. Um, so I don't think the War Doctor is really a hardened warrior. I don't really see him as that, but maybe a more morally ambiguous Doctor. But I think with the limited time that John Hurt got, of course, because originally this role was supposed to be for Christopher Eccleston, I think he does a good job of playing the War Doctor. And of course, when talking about the Doctor, we can't not mention the companions. So first up is obviously the main companion of this episode and the whole of Series 7B, Clara Oswald. Now I know a lot of people don't like Clara um, because either they think she was too important or she came back too often or they just don't like her for some reason. But I think this is the first episode where she really steps out of her impossible girl like namesake and like that shadow and actually becomes a proper companion because in this because obviously before that in name of the doctor the doctor was always trying to guess like who is the who is clara oswald why have i seen her two more times before and like she is the impossible girl however in name of the doctor it was revealed why clara was the impossible girl and why the doctor had seen multiple of her because she stepped into his time stream however I think in this episode, she truly has emerged from that namesake. And in this episode, she knows the Doctor really well. So you can see that the 11th Doctor is tortured by what he has done in his past, like when he fought in the Time War and how he is the last of the Time Lords. And also, um, she even has moments with Ten where they can, when it's like Ten is talking to her and telling her what all the Doctors are thinking and they have a good back and forth there. And also, even with the War Doctor as well, she knows that the War Doctor's eyes are so nice and so young that he hasn't pressed the button on the Time War yet, just by knowing the Doctor that much, that she knows just by looking into his eyes that he cannot have pressed the button that wiped out the Time Lords, because he hasn't gone through that yet. And she is right, of course, as I said, he hasn't gone through that yet. And Clara is so connected to the Doctor that even not with her Doctor, she knows what the Doctor is thinking, what he has gone through, what he can and can't do. 
And it even comes to the head when the uh, 11th and 10th Doctor are with the War Doctor and they're about to kill Gallifrey and Clara says that she never pictured the 11th Doctor, well, being the one to wipe out the Time Lords. And that convinces the 11th Doctor to change their history and, well, save Gallifrey. And of course, the other main companion in this episode is the moment, which um, in the episode is described as a mass weapon to kill the whole of Gallifrey, but it has a consciousness, and it develops that as Billy Piper, or in this episode, the Bad Wolf, which takes on the form of Rose Tyler, but it thinks it's the Bad Wolf, because of course that was the phrase that followed the Doctor and Rose all throughout their time from series one to series four. But I think this is a casting I never knew I needed. I mean, Billy Piper as the moment, I think she is better in this episode than she was in, like, uh, might be a hot take, but series two as Rose, and also series four as Rose, because she is just so crazy, but also calm and compassionate as the moment. She knows a way to put the Doctors kind of in order without 11 and 10 knowing that she's a thing, only War can see her, and she finds a way to kind of sway War into doing a more compassionate thing of not killing the, um, well, all the Time Lords. Of course it takes an extra push from Clara and the 11th Doctor to actually not destroy Gallifrey, but I think Billy Piper's moment does an incredible um, job of swaying War into doing something different and not killing all the Time Lords on Gallifrey. And of course she is also amazing because it is kind of a celebration with um, John Hurt and her of Classic Hill and New Hill. Of course, of, of course John Hurt is a just a special doctor created in New Who, but he has more ties to Classic Who than any of the New Who doctors. And in this like kind of combination between Classic Who and New, to and New Who, there is just wonderful banter between them as the moment is kind of mocking him about his life between a girl and a box when she is talking about the moment as the weapon and the moment as her. And um, just like, and also how she can sway him into doing different things, how maybe his companions in the classic era couldn't, and also in the way that they could in that era. And there is no really romantic connection between the moment and the war doctor, but of course there is a romantic connection between the ninth doctor and Rose and the tenth doctor and Rose. So it just has everything. If you don't like the relationship part of Doctor Who, it's not it with them. If you do, you know they have a future in that way. If you like the banter in the classic era, they have that. If you like the banter in the New Who era, they have that. With the combination of the Knight of the War Doctor and the moment, you have something for everyone. And I think Billy Piper and John Hurt are a really big part. Their charisma is a really big part of why it works like that. And it is just amazing to see them on screen together. And of course, the rest of the cast are amazing. I want to start with um, Joanna Page as um, Queen Elizabeth I because I know her most and I expect most people know her as Stacey from Gavin and Stacey and she is just amazing. I, like That is a casting I never knew I needed. She does a great job of playing a regal queen and Elizabeth I, even though people might think of her as ugly. She was a really beautiful woman back in the day and Joanna Page carries off a young Elizabeth I really great. Not only in the looks but also in how she acts. Like she is ruthless but strong and independent as well because she had to be as the Queen and she carries that off so well and I just, I, I never thought I would see Stacey from Gavin and Stacey in an episode of Doctor Who. And of course the other cast members are amazing too, like with Unit, we have Kate Stewart who made her debut in the episode The Power of Free, and she is just amazing, she really feels like she could be a head of an organisation like Unit that is sent to deal with aliens. She does get a bit outmatched by the Zygons, but she 
pulls it around in the final act when she is like, I will basically destroy London if it will stop you. And she seems to be winning until the Doctor eventually pulls it round and manages to save the humans and the Zygons. But she is just, at multiple points in this episode, she seems like she is on top and that is how it must be. It is a bit like that she's just the daughter of the Brigadier at times and she is outclassed by the aliens. But at other points, she is a shining mo star in this episode. And not to mention her second hand, her right hand woman, her second in command, Os um, Osgood. Osgood is amazing. She kind of becomes more important and better in the Zygon 2 part of that comes later um, in series um, 9. But I think she does a good job in this episode. She is obviously a fan character that is just meant to love the Doctor, but she does have some amazing parts where she saves them, um, Kate, Kate and McGillop, and they bargain with the um, Zygons, but again her character is more of just to um, kind of appreciate the Doctor, so she gets better in later series, but this is just a small part of why she becomes a fan favourite character and then why she gets better stories in later series because she does have some amazing moments. And of course, the main plot of this episode is the fact that the Doctor is saving Gallifrey. So let's get into that. And it comes when the 11th and 10th Doctor, along with Clara, are allowed to gain access to when the Time War is located by Billy Piper's The Moment. And the 11th Doctor, with the help of Clara and The Moment, um, says that he will save Gallifrey rather than burn it. And of course, this runs parallel with the Zygon and Unit plotline, where the Doctor, the 10th, 11th and War Doctor, um, stop um, Kate Stewart from blowing up UNIT and help the Zygons and humans negotiate a peace treaty where the Zygons can live on Earth um, and of course the humans are alright with that and the Zygons um, so they create a, a safe safeguards for both species and basically save the day and also stop Kate Stewart from feeling as bad as they do because they know if she blows up London, she will feel as bad as they do about them blowing up their home planet. And with that newfound knowledge and power that he will not blow up his planet again, he decides that he is going to save Gallifrey. And of course, we get to one of the final scenes where the Doctors go to save Gallifrey. However, the Time Lords say, well, to save Gallifrey, the calculations to... Um, save it in time will take hundreds and hundreds thousands of years and the doctor says that's true but he started a very long time ago and then we see every single doctor starting at the very beginning that at least we knew at the time with the first doctor and it's just great to see all of these doctors we see one all the way through to 12. That is right, Peter Capaldi makes his first appearance ever as the Doctor, even though it's just his um, eyes and his attack eyebrows, he does an amazing job and it's just so great to hear um, references from the first Doctor to the Time Lords because um, the Time Lords weren't brought in until the second Doctor era, so this is um, this is um, audio done from someone else that is just doing an impersonation of William Hartnell. And they do an amazing job. You you wouldn't know the difference. Like, if you listen to William Hartnell and then listen to this line, there's, like, no difference. So that's an amazing job. And it's just great to see all of them. Again, archive footage from every Doctor, even the Ninth Doctor, is just an amazing, um, well celebration of 50 years of Doctor Who at that time. I know Day of the Doctor gets a little bit of flack for not having as much classic Who representation and I believe that is true but there is this all these Doctors you can't tell me that is not a representation of 50 years at least in that one scene. Um, so yeah I just think that scene especially is amazing. 
And then once um, they save Gallifrey and the Daleks destroy each other, they are back at the National Gallery and, like, they are still unsure of whether they were able to save Gallifrey rather than having it burn. But um, they said, well, at least they tried to save Gallifrey. And then they part, well, go their separate ways. Um, War leaves first and his and he um, starts to regenerate by saying, oh, makes sense, I'm wearing a bit thin, which is actually what the first Doctor said um, in the story where, um, where he regenerated, the 10th planet. His reason for regeneration was that his body was wearing a bit thin as well. So that's good comparison between the first and War Doctor. And then we see a CGI, well, s parts of Eccleston's face coming through due to CGI, which I think is a nice touch. They don't fully do a CGI. Eccleston would definitely be a disservice to his Doctor as he declined to be in Day of the Doctor, but they include him in a sort of way, referencing the fact that War does regenerate into nine. And then 10 parts away with 11, and we hear his final regeneration lines of, I don't want to go, um, when he's talking about the Doctors going to Trenzalore. And um, it's just fun to see them kind of come to good terms with um, Ten saying, I'm glad my future is in safe hands, which is what the first Doctor said to the fifth Doctor in the episode, The Five Doctors. So that's just nice. And then um, Clara leaves Eleven with a painting because she knows just by looking in his eyes that he just wants some time alone with the Gallifrey Falls slash No More painting. And as the 11th Doctor looks at the painting, we hear the voice... You know, I really think you might. ...of the one, the only, Mr. Tom Baker. Yes, that is right. Tom Baker makes a cameo in this episode as himself. He is his normal self. He isn't the 4th Doctor. It is implied that he is a later incarnation of the Doctor that has retired. And really, this idea has paved the way for David Tennant to return as the 14th Doctor in these three upcoming 60th anniversary specials. So this cameo by Tom Baker paved the way for David Tennant's return as the 14th Doctor, which is just an amazing. And he reveals to the 11th Doctor that they actually saved Gallifrey as the painting's full title is called Gallifrey Falls No More. It's all one title because the Doctors did save Gallifrey. And then we get um, this amazing closing shot of all the Doctors standing together, and it's just amazing. I know the CGI is a little wonky, but it's just amazing to have all Doctors there standing, being as equals together in one episode. And that is just amazing. I, I just thought this episode was amazing. I mean, yes, I do think it does have a little bit of lack of classic representation. It seems to be catered more towards New Who, but that's a sort of worry I have for the 60th anniversary specials. I think the Star Beast is going to be very series for rerun. I hope I'm wrong and there is a lot of classic Doctor Who representation, but that's something I'm worried for. So the Star Beast and, and Wild Blue Yonder and the Google need to have a lot of classic and Who representation rather than it just being a series for a rerun, but I am optimistic as well. And also I think that it needs to be this um, Day of the Doctor had style and substance in the episode which is definitely what the 60th anniversary needs to be as well. It looks so good in a lot of places, Day of the Doctor, yet it also has an amazing story behind it. So the 60th anniversary specials need to do the same. And I just thought this episode was amazing. So many good parallels. And I did do a video on how the 50th anniversary special was almost very different, and I will link that up in the cards above. So check that out if you haven't already. And also I will be hopefully um, bringing out um, a breakdown of all the hidden easter eggs and details in Day of the Doctor, but that might be coming out on the day of the Star Beast, or if not, then um, the day after the 26th. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and um, stay tuned because you don't want to miss that. And 
as I said, I just thought this episode was amazing. Let me know down in the comments below, what did you think of the day of the Doctor? How do you think it compares? Do you think the 60th anniversary should take notes from that episode? And also, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, also subscribe, and share it out, and I will see you in the next one.